You're having a conversation with your young son who's only three years old. Then he mentions something that makes your blood run cold. He starts talking about the day he died. That's exactly what happened to a man named Dan whose son seemed to be able to recall in intricate detail someone else's final moments. When Dan asked his son to tell him more, the boy described parts of a completely different house to their family home, a green kitchen, a large backyard, and the driveway, the place where the child claimed that he had died. Dan pressed the matter further, and that's when his son told him with an eerie sense of calm that the driveway was where his old dad had run him over with the family car. It was an accident though, dad, so it's okay, the young boy told his father, delivering one of the creepiest sentences that Dan had ever heard his child say. But the tale recounted by Dan's son is hardly the only example of this strange phenomena all across the world. There are numerous cultures that believe in the idea of reincarnation, particularly within Hindu and Buddhist traditions. A lot of non-religious people also share a belief in reincarnation, mostly as a means to bring themselves comfort when faced with the inevitability of death. But others believe it's actually possible and even claim to have concrete evidence that they had a past life. It can be easy to brush off a lot of these flimsy stories, or people's recounting of dreams they believe are linked to who they were before reincarnation. But it's another far creepier story when children seem to harbor knowledge of their supposed past lives. Some have recalled details that they couldn't possibly be aware of at such a young age, with a few having even shared memories of places they've never been to before. And in rare instances, the details of these children's stories even align with the deaths of real people. So we've scoured the internet for some creepy stories of people who can seemingly remember their past lives, heading toward the one we think might be the scariest of all, a three-year-old boy who may have solved the murder of his own past self. Take the son of a woman named Jody, who is having recollections of a supposed past life at only 18 months old. According to the child's mother, he had developed speech surprisingly early, since most babies only speak their first words after the first 10 to 15 months of life. Then again, it's possible that Jody's son had some memory of how to talk left over, or rushed the process because he just had to get some of these unnerving details out. Jody described how her child said he missed his other mother and his older brother, but he seemed also to be aware that he couldn't see them. They wouldn't know it was him, the boy said. He was too young. When Jody asked her son why, he described getting on a motorbike and heading out to the shops to buy a sandwich. According to the child's story, in this supposed past life, he hit a dog while riding the motorcycle, causing him to crash and die as a result. The child reportedly loathed dogs and would even mutter the phrase, stupid sandwich, under his breath a lot. All across the internet, thousands of people have shared stories of creepy things their children have said, or about children they know telling them the details of lives they used to live. Of course, as with a lot of things, just because someone on the internet says something happened doesn't make it true. We're omitting details like the full names of the children or their families to respect their privacy. But we'll leave it up to you to decide whether these are legitimate tales of reincarnation or just examples of kids saying silly things that coincidentally and creepily line up with the real world. One Reddit user described a similar story about their nephew who seemed to also harbor eerie and vivid memories of his previous life and family. One day while babysitting the boy who was around three or four at the time, the user recalled their nephew pointing to a refrigerator magnet that displayed a picture of rock formations in the Arizona desert. The nephew asked where the place on the magnet was, and the user told him, at which point the child described that he had used to live near red rocks similar to those in the picture with his, quote, first family. The user's nephew, as is typical in stories like these, then went on to describe in detail the family he had from his past life. According to the boy, his relatives all had straight dark hair, and he had a mother, a father, and a brother. That was until he had wandered too far into the desert one day, at a time too close to when it got dark. The child's tale of their past life concluded with a description of how they died, saying that they'd been eaten by animals that were not dogs, not wolves, but smaller. While they're not typically known to be a threat to humans, Arizona just so happens to be home to coyotes, which are smaller than both wolves and dogs. A lot of these children's supposed recollections are dismissed as purely fantasy, nothing more than an overactive imagination or a child repeating something that they heard an adult talk about, or saw on TV, or perhaps even experienced in a dream. They might claim to remember another family or a different set of parents, a home that isn't the one they currently live in, or even the circumstances of how a past version of them supposedly died. But sometimes there are times when a child's statements line up accurately with the life of a deceased person. 
Such was the case with one couple whose eldest son was named after a Marine that the husband of said couple had served alongside. One day on a drive toward the husband's sister's house, the couple and their son passed a military base. This just so happened to be the place where the Marine their son was named after had been buried after he was killed in action during deployment. At the time, the couple's son was no older than three and the family hadn't taken him to the grave of the Marine he'd been named after. They had never even taken him anywhere near that area where the base was located. But right as they were driving past the site where this soldier had been buried, the couple's son very casually pointed out, I'm buried over there. This is far from the only story of a child recalling past life of military service. When her son was only four years old, Patricia Austrian noticed that the boy Edward had developed a phobia of rainy overcast days. Hardly something unique to him, of course, as the sound of rain or thunder can often startle small children. But that doesn't explain why, as a child, this one Reddit user reportedly started asking during a heavy thunderstorm, when do the bombs drop? Are they gone yet? Unbeknownst to this user, who had grown up in Germany, their grandfather used to alert the city of incoming air raids during wartime. He died three days before the user was born, and at the time, they were unaware of their grandfather or either world wars. But back to Edward's case, things started to become strange after he developed his own hang-ups about rainy days. The boy reportedly began to experience severe pain in his throat and complained to his mother whenever he felt it hurting. Specifically, he told her that it was his shot that hurt. Naturally, Edward was taken to the doctor to try to determine the cause for the pain that he was experiencing. However, unable to determine the exact cause of it, doctors decided it would be best to remove the boy's tonsils as a precaution. It was after this happened that Edward developed a new problem, a cyst developed in his throat. Normally, this too would be drained and removed surgically, but the doctors found that the cyst wasn't reacting to usual treatment, leaving them baffled as to what to do. It was then that Patricia asked her son what he had meant when he said his shot was hurting. To her amazement, he started to give a detailed story about wading through mud on a rainy day, describing in frighteningly accurate detail the trenches of the First World War. It was then that Edward told her that on the battlefield he had been killed by a gunshot wound to his throat. The story gets even stranger. After Edward had explained this all to his parents, opening up about his past life and describing how he supposedly died, the cyst that had formed in his throat seemed to disappear. While not impossible for a cyst to clear up on its own without any treatment, this can take months or even years. The doctors were unable to provide a concrete explanation for exactly why Edwards had seemingly vanished or how it had seemed to line up with the story of his apparent death in the trenches. Something similar happened in 2014 when a young boy who we'll refer to as Andrew L made some statements that truly startled both his parents, to the extent that they believed he might even be possessed by a ghost or some kind of demonic entity. It all started when Andrew at the age of only four years old began to experience fits of inconsolable crying. Now, it's true that something like that tends to come with the territory when you decide to have children. But what isn't so typical are the unnerving things Andrew was telling his parents when they tried to console him. Upon asking their son exactly what was wrong, his mother recalls him responding tearily with, Why did you let me die in that fire? Hearing such an unsettling question coming out of her son's mouth had Andrew's mother, Michelle, convinced that there was a spirit dwelling within the boy. Of course, it could have just been the result of a bad dream or even Andrew play-acting. This excuse was thrown out of the window when he mentioned living at a specific address, 860 Main Street in Sumter, Georgia. That was over 840 miles away from where the family lived in Virginia Beach. From there, with her son recalling things that a child his age had no way of knowing, Michelle started researching. She tried piecing together the vague details Andrew was giving, but couldn't find anything concrete. Michelle did, however, manage to reach out to a reality TV show titled Ghost Inside My Child, which ran between 2013 and 2015 and focused on kids who had allegedly been experiencing memories of their past lives. There's been a little debate as to whether the producers of Ghost Inside My Child came up with the eventual story that supposedly linked to Andrew's past life, or if Michelle reached that conclusion without the help of the show. But regardless, everyone seemed convinced that they found a match for the things Andrew had been saying. In October of 1983, there was a bombing attack in Beirut, Lebanon, one that claimed the lives of multiple U.S. Marines. Among them was Sergeant Val Lewis. Apparently, when shown photographs of six different Marines who had died in the bombing, the child felt a strong connection to Val's picture. According to the producers working on the show, Andrew kept going back to the picture of Val Lewis, 
even after the cameras had stopped rolling. When prompted, he even referred to the photos of the other Marines as his friends. Some have called into question the legitimacy of Andrew's story, given that in the show itself he parrots back a lot of the same phrases his mother uses, possibly feeling uneasy with the cameras on him. Naturally, the producers of Ghost Inside My Child's primary concern was making a show for TV. And there are plenty of non-scientific ghost hunting shows that rely on lackluster investigations and debunked pseudoscientific methods in order to reach a hasty but definitive conclusion without any loose ends. Still, Andrew's parents took their son's word as confirmation that the source of his apparent past life memories was indeed Sergeant Lewis. The family took Andrew to visit Val Lewis's grave in Georgia, hoping it would provide the young boy with some closure over his supposed past life experiences. Andrew laid flowers at the gravesite and even remarked that another of the graves belonging to another Marine was his friend. However, there are still critics who remain skeptical, pointing out that the show could have done a better job at determining what the source of Andrew's worrying memories of the fire were, rather than jumping to the conclusion that it was Sergeant Val Lewis. This could have been achieved by showing him photos of various different people from different eras. Additionally, despite Andrew's supposed providing Val's Georgia address, none of the show's staff were able to get in touch with the Marine's family. And on top of it all, many worried about the potential repercussions of allowing a small child to believe he's the reincarnation of a dead Marine. That's a profoundly scary idea for a young kid to grapple with, and it's arguably far creepier than the question he had asked that caused this whole rabbit hole to open up. Still, Andrew's story isn't the only time a little boy was widely believed to have been the reincarnation of a deceased member of the military. In fact, people were so convinced by this next story that even the surviving friends of the dead pilot in question believed that six-year-old James was their fallen comrade reincarnated. From an early age, according to James's parents, Andrea and Bruce, their son loved nothing more than playing with toy airplanes. However, once he reached two years old, these were the very things that seemed to plague the boy with regular nightmares. He would wake up screaming, and Andrea even recalled the way he described the dreams he was having. Airplane crash, plane on fire, little man can't get out. According to Andrea, her mother was the first to suggest the possibility that these could be memories of James's past life. However, the parents were quick to dismiss the idea, until even more strange details started to present themselves. In one instance, James started going over one of his toy planes as if he was doing a pre-flight check. His knowledge of planes seemed to be way too advanced for a young boy. This surprised his mother when she bought him a new plane with an object that she thought was a bomb on the underside of the toy. Without missing a beat, Andrea's son corrected her, telling her it wasn't a bomb, but a drop tank. Similarly, while watching a History Channel documentary, a narrator referred to a Japanese plane as a Zero, only for James to insist it was called a Tony, the allied nickname for the plane. In both instances, James was right, even though his parents had never even heard these terms before, and there seemed to be no way that James should know the details like these. He had only watched children's shows, and neither of his parents had been watching anything relating to military history that contained the details he was referring to. Then, his nightmare started to get more intense. Multiple times a week, the boy would be troubled by violent dreams about a plane crash and being shot down by a plane with a red sun on it, a Japanese plane. He began to talk more about it when he was awake. From what he described, it sounded a lot like he'd been a pilot in his previous life. According to his story, his past self had also been named James, who had flown off a ship named the Natoma. The story got much creepier, though, when James's parents looked further into what their son had said. Andrea and Bruce were able to discover that there was, in fact, an aircraft carrier used by the U.S. Navy during World War II called the USS Natoma Bay. And among their squadron was a 21-year-old fighter pilot from Pennsylvania named James Houston, who was killed in action after being shot down by Japanese artillery in Iwo Jima over the Pacific Ocean. That was over 50 years before young James was even born. That might seem pretty conclusive, but not everyone was completely convinced. Desperate to help rid her son of his perpetual nightmares, Andrea contacted a therapist who already believed in the possibility of reincarnation, Carol Bauman. She told Andrea not to dismiss the worrying things James was saying, but to instead reassure him that these things had happened during another life and in another body, and that his parents should remind their son that he was safe for now. This advice seemed to work, and James's nightmares diminished soon after. It's also worth mentioning that the death of James Houston would have been forgotten in history had it not been brought up again by being connected to James's nightmares, whether he truly was the reincarnated pilot or not. But skepticism abounds when it comes to these supposed tales of reincarnation. 
For one, generally speaking, research into cases like James only really begins after a point where families have already accepted that their child is genuinely a reincarnated person. Plus, it is worth noting that while they might not have watched many Second World War documentaries, James's family had taken him to a flight museum at 18 months old, and this began his fascination with planes, particularly those from the World War II era. It's entirely possible that the specific details he was able to recall had been subconsciously implanted when he was much younger. A lot of what children say is often ambiguous, leaving it open to interpretation. And even James's own father, Bruce, wasn't without his own sense of disbelief. But he considered the information given by his son to be so striking and unusual that it all but confirmed the idea that he had in fact been U.S. Navy pilot James Houston in his previous life. Details of past lives and nightmares certainly have a link in more than just Andrew's story. One online user's father experienced many sleepless nights after they made a creepy statement. While watching a war documentary, the user, a child at the time, reacted strangely to the mention of a tube. You mean the tube from when I was a grown-up? When the father asked for a further explanation, he was left wishing he hadn't. The child described being placed in a tube with another person and given a knife. Both were tasked to kill each other, but the supposed past self of the story was stabbed in the chest, a detail that apparently still keeps this user's dad awake at night. That's creepy enough, but another dream, described by a Redditor detailing their past life, might be much more harrowing. They explained that as a young child, they had always used the wrong words for stop and come back. When their parents eventually asked them about it, the child described a reoccurring dream they had experienced. In this dream, they were a man in their late 20s with a female partner who stood in a long line on a road curving around the edge of a hill. They also distinctly remembered being worried about papers and that there were men in uniforms checking these important documents. As the uniformed men came toward the man that this child seemed to remember being, they heard a gunshot. Grabbing the hand of their partner, they remembered turning to run down the hill, distinctively aware that they needed to get to a nearby river to escape from dogs that were pursuing them. The men in uniforms were also yelling as they gained on the escaping couple, using the same words the child had used for stop and come back. Their dream ended with a man being shot in the back, before everything suddenly went white. Even as a child, they recalled an overwhelming feeling that everything would be better now. The online user recalls that their parents asking about the words they had been using in place of stop and come back. As it turned out, they were check phrases. Much like Andrew's story from earlier, we uncovered another reincarnation tale on Reddit that was surprisingly spurred on by a Navy vehicle. According to the user, they had been watching their friend's son when a large Navy aircraft carrier caught the child's attention. The boy stared at it with a vacant, faraway expression before saying that he remembered when his boat had sank and that there had been so many sharks. When the user later mentioned the incident to the boy's mother, she simply replied casually stating, yeah, he does that sometimes. Hearing a child claim to have died in a war or been eaten by sharks is frightening enough, but another Reddit user reportedly received an ominous statement from her five-year-old daughter, one that linked to a real personal tragedy. According to the user, one day out of the blue, her five-year-old had told her that, I was in your belly twice, mama, the first time I died before I came out, but I came back. The Reddit user instantly connected this frightening statement to a very real miscarriage she had suffered eight months before falling pregnant a second time with her daughter. She'd never told this to her five-year-old daughter, and yet somehow the girl seemingly claimed to have been the reincarnation of the woman's prior unsuccessful pregnancy. You can come across a lot of terrifying tales about possible reincarnations like this over on certain Reddit threads. Of course, that does make it hard to determine exactly which ones are legitimate and which ones are just ploys to garner some coveted upvotes or even some Reddit gold. But occasionally, there are those that make our blood run a little cold. And occasionally, even our cynicism gets pierced too. In one such story, a different user describes their son talking about his previous life as a ballerina. Even at a young age of around three or four, the boy seemed to be able to recall in immaculate detail things like the lights, the music, and even the audience's applause during the performances. Then the boy's next words chilled his parents to the bone. I was at a party on a boat, and I fell into the water, then poof, I was here. Some people online have speculated that this particular reincarnation story is eerily similar to the death of Emma Levery, one of the last ballerinas of the Romantic era, who died all the way back in 1862. 
However, rather than falling off a boat and drowning thanks to a heavy costume, as some have claimed, Emma Levery actually died as a result of infected burn wounds that were caused when her costume caught on fire thanks to the open flames of candles on the stage. That brings us to one of the strangest of the creepy past life stories we came across, a child who seemed to remember not just one, but two of his lives prior to reincarnation, and in both, he wasn't human. A boy in Thailand had such vivid memories of existing as multiple animals before his birth that it even caused him to attack the hunter he thought was responsible for the end of one of his previous lives. Dala Wong, only three years old at the time, became the focus of numerous studies after he made claims that he had two past lives. In the first of these, the boy said he had previously lived as a deer until he had been killed by a hunter. This is what led directly to the second of the two lives Dala Wong seemed to be able to recall, wherein he was reincarnated not directly into a human body, but into that of a cobra. This came to light three years after Dala Wong was born, as a human child at this time, when he spotted a man at a neighbor's party, the child became enraged and started frantically searching for a weapon with which to attack the adult, which is already creepy enough in and of itself. The man in question was one Mr. Hayu, and Dala Wong had never met him before and neither had his family. Yet the child insisted he had recognized the man. Intervening before any harm could befall Mr. Hayu, Dala Wong's mother insisted that her son should explain what was wrong. That was when Dalawang recounted an event that he would have had no way of previously knowing about. Prior to the meeting, Mr. Hayu had an encounter with a cobra, which had been attacked by two dogs that he owned. He had stepped in and killed the snake, suffering a bite to the shoulder that left Mr. Hayu with a scar. Later, he took the cobra's remains back home in order to cook and eat it, sharing some of the meat with a friend, a man who, as it turned out, ended up being Dalawang's father. The three-year-old child's explicit retelling of the snake being cornered by two dogs and then being killed and cooked for food was attributed to him having been that very same snake in his previous life. The boy was aware of acute details of the story too, touching Mr. Hayu's shoulder where the man had been bitten, and even being aware that his father had eaten a piece of the snake, which both were able to verify. And the strangest detail in all of this, Dala Wong was reported to have suffered from a rare skin condition that left the lower half of his body covered in scales, not unlike those of a snake. While there are many more stories of supposed human-to-human -human reincarnations, Dalawang's isn't the only human-to-animal one that's been reported. Another boy by the name of Peter supposedly had a memory from a past life triggered when he was given a candy necklace. According to his story, he had been a chimpanzee and described to his mother in detail how he'd been captured in the wild and later brought to a zoo. It was while in captivity that a visitor had thrown a similar candy necklace into the enclosure. Being unsure what to do with the necklace, the chimp threw it back. Another child named Sam seemed to have had memories that linked to the life of his deceased grandfather. His dad, Ron, recalled a particularly creepy incident where, at only 18 months old, Sam asked if he'd had any siblings in his past life. The boy seemed to be aware of his grandfather's sister, despite having no way of knowing about her. Sam told his father that this sister had been turned into a fish by some bad guys. Sam's grandfather had in fact had a sister. She'd been murdered 60 years earlier, with her body being recovered in the San Francisco Bay. One of the better known stories of reincarnation is that of Ruth Simmons. We've already been over a lot of cases of children saying things that are unnerving about how they died in a previous life. Now, imagine a child speaking in an entirely different voice, one that wasn't their own, but that of their past self. Back in 1952, Ruth Simmons was put under a series of hypnosis sessions, which is often a disputed treatment for dealing with these memories of reincarnation. It's commonly referred to as past life regression hypnosis. However, nowadays, it's not recommended that young children undergo this treatment. When Mary Bernstein, Ruth's therapist, subjected her to past life regression hypnosis, it regressed the young girl all the way back to her birth. Suddenly, Ruth started speaking in a heavy Irish accent, recalling many specific details about her previous life as a woman named Bridie Murphy, who had lived in Belfast, Ireland, during the 19th century. It wasn't possible to verify everything Ruth or Bridie had said, apart from one detail. She recalled buying food from a Mr. Farr and a Mr. John Kerrigan. The Belfast town had a directory from 1865 to 1866, and it lists both men as local grocers. This brings us to arguably the most unnerving of all the reincarnation stories we were able to uncover. In 2014, in the Golan Heights region near the border between Syria and Israel, a three-year-old boy 
revealed details of a past life that had actually led to the discovery of a real unsolved murder. The child isn't named in any of the sources we could find, but what is known is that he was part of the Druze ethnic group and sported a long red birthmark on his forehead. This is pretty significant in a lot of cultures around the world, as many hold the belief that a birthmark like the one this child had is a physical representation of how somebody died in a past life. The Druze, it just so happens, also believe in this superstition, considering these birthmarks to be indications of death wounds. As a result, if a child is found to have a mark like this, they are closely observed in case they reveal any potential details about their past lives. If they do, then it's customary in the Druze culture for village elders to take the children to the home they lived in during their previous life when they reach the age of three. This is provided that they're able to speak, are known to have birthmarks like the boys in the story, and crucially are already able to remember details of their past lives. Sure enough, this young boy had already mentioned something crucial about his past life. He remembered that he was murdered. He didn't fully remember the village he previously lived in, so the elders escorted him through the nearby villages close to where the boy had been born until one started to feel familiar to him. As he was shown around one village, the boy approached a particular house and suddenly found himself able to recall more details about his past life. It triggered memories of him having lived in this specific house, and he even became aware of his old name and shared it with the elders. However, upon hearing it, the elders became troubled. Not only did they recognize the name, but the man the boy claimed to have been was known to have gone missing four years earlier. But that wasn't all the boy was able to remember. He also remembered being killed. The man he'd been in his past life wasn't just missing, he had been murdered, and the boy seemed to know his killer's name. The boy confronted the man in question, a man he'd never met before in his life, and confronted him with the accusation. He recited the surprised man's full name, and then the boy told the man he used to be his neighbor. We had a fight. You killed me with an axe. The accused man immediately turned white, refusing to confess any wrongdoings. But that was when the child told the elders that he could even take them to the exact spot where he had been buried before reincarnation. So fully believing him at this point, after all, the boy had been right so far, the elders let the child take them to where he claimed his body was. There, they came across a pile of stones. And sure enough, after clearing the stones and digging a few feet into the dirt, they uncovered human remains. A skeleton had been left there, exactly where the child had said it would be. There was even a murder weapon left behind too, an axe. Upon this discovery, the elders instantly noticed something. The killer had used the axe to leave a deep wound embedded in the victim's skull, a wound that bore a striking resemblance to the boy's birthmark. The man the boy had accused had no choice but to confess to the murder. Creepy, right? For more creepy stories like the ones you've just heard, check out Kids Who Remember Their Past Lives or watch this video instead.